Welcome to Your Family Dog, a podcast dedicated to helping families love living with dogs. Here are your hosts, Julie Fudge-Smith and Colleen Pilar. Hi, and welcome back to Your Family Dog. I'm Julie, and I'm here, of course, with Colleen Pilar. And today we have a special guest, Mr. Doug Harris. He's the owner of Love Pup Pet Sitting and Dog Training in Central Ohio. Doug has been a has been an experienced pet sitter for 18 years. He is NAPS certified, which means that's the National Association of Professional Pet Sitters, and they have a certification program. He is also accredited by Pet Sitters International. He's an AKC CGC evaluator and an AKC Star Puppy Program person. And he has his CPDTKA, so he's more than qualified to not only train your dog, but to take care of it. And we're so happy he agreed to join us today. So, Colleen, you I think you have the first question for Doug. Well, I wanted to just start, Doug, with the big question of if I need someone to take care of my pet, what should I be looking for in a pet sitter? Well... The main thing that you need to be looking for in a pet sitter is that they have qualifications. There's a lot of pet sitters that call themselves hobby pet sitters, and they mean well, but they really have no idea what it takes to take care of other people's pets properly. So what we want to look for in a professional pet sitter is one that literally has certifications. And what that means is that they've taken a course with Pet Sitters International, which we not only take care of dogs and cats and have to know how to take care of them, but we take care of all species. In other words, um, birds, tropical fish, saltwater fish, pocket pets, Mm. reptiles, all those things. And we have to know how to take care of all those animals. I remember when I was, um, I, I got accredited or, or certified through NAPS, and one of my favorite ones was learning about bunnies. They have a whole section on bunnies that you learn about and birds and bird lungs. And so it really does, you're right, make a difference when you hire somebody who's been certified because they have a very strong knowledge of, of the husbandry of that particular species. And I think that's important to recognize. Positively. That's very, very important. It's, it's important for the owners to do their due diligence because there's a lot of as we all know with facebook and social media there's a lot of bad and a lot of good stuff and and it's hard to differentiate you know what's real and what's not Mm -hmm. and the only way you can do that is we when we uh when a client calls us and asks about our business you know when we get down to the nitty-gritty of it it's like yes we'll come out and do a meet and greet and that's Mm -hmm. very very important you know, we just don't go into people's homes never meeting a dog and not knowing if it's a safe dog or whatever. So the meet and greets is your first point of interviewing a potential pet sitter to take care of your pets. And not only that, take care of your home. Because once we open that door, we're liable for everything, not just your pets, everything. And we, and again, when you're doing the interview, the, the important things to ask about the pet sitter is one, are they certified? Do they have credentials that prove it? Have they ever been to a conference, a pet sitting conference? Both NAPS and PSI have pet sitting conferences every year. And that's where we learn what's going on in the industry to stay up to date to, you know, keep our clients abreast of what's going on also. Which is awesome. I think a lot of people don't don't realize that there are continuing education um, options available in so many pet related fields that the, the general pet owner doesn't necessarily realize that their vet tech gets continuing education and that their dog trainer gets continuing education and that their pet sitter gets continuing education and that that's really, really important. It's not a one and done kind of education. Right. You have to stay on top of things. And it's ongoing. I mean, it's not like, you know, like when we are certified as a as in first aid or pet sitting, we have to get recertified every three years. So it's not like you're certified and this lasts forever. 
Um, mm-hmm. it, it's a serious business. Just like if you were a plumber or electrician, they all have to be, they have to go through certifications all the time to maintain their license. We have to do the same thing. And a lot of people, when I, when I meet people, you, it's amazing the number of people that say, you know, my friend referred me. I never, I had no clue that there are professionals doing pet sitting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's still a, as old as the industry is, it's amazing the number of people that don't understand that there are professional pet sitters that exist. Right. So one of the problems with, with professional pet sitting is we tend to be more expensive than the neighbor's hood, uh, teenager who comes in. Um, mm-hmm. But what what more for their money are they getting with per, with uh, hiring a professional pet sitter than they are their you know neighbor's 15-year-old daughter who really likes cats? Uh, what can you offer that that 15-year-old can't? Reliability. <laughs> Um, I, I I won't go into it, but yeah, I won't go into it, but I I can tell you many, many stories of people who have hired us and said, you know, I used to use my next door neighbor. They didn't show up, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I use my, um, teenage neighbor down the street and I found out he was having parties at my house. So Uh, those are, you, you want, you want adults coming into your house. We, we don't hire anyone. Uh, under 21. I, and I, I say that with reservations because I, I did hire one 18 year old that just graduated high school that really loved animals, had got a full scholarship for four years ago to study biology. And uh, she ended up being a very, very good pet sitter. Uh, she now is working in a vet clinic. Um, so it's very important who you hire. I mean, you know, it, uh, it's a big responsibility. You're, you're responsible for a person's home. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. it's a, a serious business. You know, we're, we're trained that when we come up, when we pull up to a house, we literally, if there's a car behind us or parks outside, we don't go in the house. We drive off. There, there's, there's policies that we have to follow because there are criminal elements out there like case neighborhoods. We we're aware of that and we're aware of our safety and the safety of the client's home that we're taking care of. Um, as an example, um, when we go into a house, the first thing we do on the first pet sit, let's say it's a vacation pet sit, we're going three day, three times or four times a day. We actually, first time we go in the house, we check the perimeter to make sure every window and door is locked. You'd be surprised at the number of times I go into people's homes and it's not secure. And that's, that's not safe for us and obviously not safe for the owner. Mm-hmm. Or the pet. Yeah. Or the pets. And that, and this is the thing people don't realize that there's a lot involved in what we do. And uh, we take our, we take it very seriously because um, uh, it, it, it's a serious business. One of the things I think that's also important to remember about pet sitters is that a professional pet sitter is going to be licensed or not licensed, but it, we're going to be insured so that if right. something should happen, um, it will be covered by insurance. We're insured and bonded. Right. So, for example, um, and, and anybody that you have hired comes under your insurance policy. So that um, it's, I think that that's really important. And that can be very reassuring to a homeowner because what happens if, you know, you open the door and the dog rushes out and knocks you down and, you know, the dog's no, hurt. I, hurt. As, as, okay. As, as a stuff. professional pet sitter, all right. As a professional pet sitter, we're all trained, highly trained. When we go into a home, we block the door. We literally block the door so a dog can knock it out. 19 years, this is actually our 19th year of business. In 19 years of doing this, we've never lost a pet for any reason. As far as the insurance is concerned, we're insured and covered so that if we stepped on a dog's paw and, and broke it, you know, we would take care of that. Uh, for the client because the, the animal's in our care. So it's called custody and care. Uh, same thing if we're out walking a dog. Um, and we we have had this happen where a loose dog came running and attacked the dog that we were walking. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we covered Terrifying. everything. Even now, the, the client said we didn't have to, um, but we offered it. You know, that it was in our care. But the, there was nothing we could do about it. We even carry mace with us. When mm-hmm. situations like that happen, it doesn't happen often, but it happens. It sure is scary uh, so when it we're does. We're covered for all that. Oh God, it is. 
Yeah, it really is. When you, when you see a dog charging you, and uh, it's, it's just amazing. But anyhow, we're, we're, we're super careful. When we're, when we're even walking dogs, and we explain this to people, when we're walking your dog down the street, and we see another person walking their dog or their pet towards us, we cross the street. And if the person follows us, we cross back. And if they continue to do it, we just tell them, you know, we explain to them, you know, please stay away from our dog, period. And they say, well, but I know the dog. I said, I'm sorry. It's in my care. And I'm not trying to be mean, but for your safety and our safety, just stay away. <laughs> and we just say it politely. Right. And I've had people actually com- complain about that. Not people, the, the person that wanted to pet the dog. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, can you explain your rationale behind that? Safety. Because you, you never know. An, animals, you know, do, dogs, you know, just like humans, you know, you, you can meet someone and um, feel uncomfortable. All right. Animals do the same thing. And except for when they feel uncomfortable, they start growling, barring their teeth, and then eventually bite. So we we do that to, to protect the dog, mm-hmm. so, that, so so no incidents can happen. Well, I think so part of it is are proactive. Right. Well, it seems to me too is that the, well, the person may know the dog and want to come over and say hi to it. The problem is the dog is not in the normal situation of his owner walking him. I have a person that I kind Correct. of know walking me, and so the dog itself mm-hmm. may not be in the same emotional state he normally is in when he's out walking because this is a new experience for him, and that can put a dog right. on edge a little bit, and you want to be careful that the dog doesn't get pushed over from being a little bit nervous to being scared, mm-hmm. and having an encounter with somebody in a different way can, can cause a dog to be you know, upset and reactive perhaps in a way it normally right. wouldn't be. So, so Doug, what and kind I, of what tips would you give an owner for setting their dog up for success to be taken care of by a pet sitter? So how can I make it easier on my pets to have a pet sitter come and take care of them? Okay. Well, the, the main thing is when we do the meet and greet, that's when we meet the pets and find out all of the needs. Um, and then after that, you know, I, I, personally do all the interviews so I, I don't take on every client that I meet because I have met dogs that have behavior problems and they're not safe and um, so we form that relationship in the very beginning and then we get all the details about the care of the dog the feeding what it likes to do play ball not play ball uh, frisbee only goes in the backyard takes takes them for a walk we, we get all that information up front and that goes into our database so that when we start the pet sit, you know, we, we know about the dog. And um, the, the reason why the owner is asking for someone to come to the house is because they understand that this is where the dog lives. This is its environment. This is where it's going to feel the safest. Why, why take it to a kennel where there's a lot of barking? unknowing things going on and, and getting the dog all upset. So I have people, you know, where we, we come four times a day mm-hmm. um, to take care of the dog. And we obviously do overnights pet sits for people that have um, more needs because again, we're trained in doing uh, basic medical needs such as insulin shots, uh, administering sub Q for animals that have some medical issues. So we do all those types of things to, to, to make the animal comfortable in its own environment. One of my next questions is um, you um, are a local business. And personally, I think it's important to, to shop locally. Um, why would somebody choose? Why would you recommend that somebody choose a local business owner as opposed to somebody who owns a franchise in a national chain? What difference does that make? Mm-hmm. Well, when, the difference between small businesses like myself, we're, we're actually a medium sized business. We have roughly about 550 clients. Um, we care about the animals a hundred percent working with your local pet sitters and 
as an example, we have a pet sitting network, a group of professional pet sitters that works in the Columbus area. And we have a meeting every two months where we sit down and have dinner and talk about our businesses and what we can do better. And a lot of times we even have a vet come in and talk to us just to bring us up to date on some things. Um, but working with your local pet sitters is very, very important. And the way you find out about your local pet sitters. So if you're a individual looking for someone to take care of your pets, the, the, the best place to find out about a professional pet sitter would be to go to either NAPS website or PSI. And in their websites, there's a program right up front that all you have to do is put in your zip code and that'll bring up numerous number of uh, numerous numbers of pet sitter businesses in your area. And, and you have a, a, a choice of who to, who to choose from. Um, if you call someone that says, Oh, we don't cover your area. That pet sitter nine out of 10 times will advise you. Well, here, call so-and-so. I know them. They're, they're very, very reputable. Um, and the other thing is, don't forget to ask your vet. Your vet normally knows the pet sitters that um, work in your neighborhood. That's true. That's how I met my vet, actually, is I was pet sitting. Is it really? I had, okay. Yeah. And a dog developed um, just, it seemed like in the matter of an hour, a, a hot spot. And I'm like, okay, called the owner. And she said, well, I don't know. Yeah, okay, take him to my vet. And I did. And I loved him. And that's how I I, uh, I met my, my current vet was at, while pet sitting. And uh, it really is valuable. And it's it's important that um, pet sitters have relationships with local vets because I mm-hmm. in that particular case, I was taking a dog that was simply in my custody, not my dog, to a vet I didn't know. And um, mm-hmm. since then, I have I've made friends with most of the vets in the area. Because it's important to me that if I'm in charge of another um, this person's animal, um, the vet needs to be comfortable that I am showing up legitimately. And I think mm-hmm. that most pet sitters that I know also know a whole lot of vets. And I think that yeah. that's something that most people don't realize how important that is until your dog has an emergency. And suddenly your pet mm-hmm. sitter is, is the one who's really being responsible and taking care of your pet. Correct. Well, as an example, today, I actually went to four vets and just dropped off boxes of candy. They happen to have pictures of dogs on it and cats just to say thank you because they, they send us referrals and whatnot. And uh, that's what we do. I mean, we, we have to deal with vets and we do have emergencies. I mean, I, um, I mean, many, many times I've had to take dogs, mm-hmm. cats to the vet on an emergency basis. And we have a whole protocol set up for all that kind of stuff. And and those are the things that, you know, when you hire your young mm-hmm. boy or girl down the street that's a neighbor to watch your pets, none of that exists. So they, they have no clue what to do. They end up going to their mom, and then the mom doesn't know what to do, and it becomes a whole fiasco. So it puts a client at ease. Once, once you go through it, do an interview with them, and you put them at ease and they've uncrossed their arms and, and all those things. And they're very relaxed and they're talking to you. Wow. You know, this is just, this is going to be so great. And then the follow up that we do just to make it even more comfortable for them. Um, obviously we send pictures of their pets. We send text. We send, we have an app that has the dog talk, you know, it just, we do all kinds of things to make, the owner so comfortable that they really do enjoy their vacation and not worry about their pets. And that really matters because you can't enjoy your vacation if you're worrying about your pets. Absolutely. Absolutely. I used to do the same things. And when I had pet sitters, I said, one of the things you need to do is every time you visit that house, you need to leave, um, you know, and I'd give them notepads. I say, you need to leave a note about every visit so that when they come back, they've got detailed notes about what's going on. It also helps you to realize, sure. to, to notice if there's a change in behavior or patterns of behavior in the dog. But yeah, I would send texts and, and all kinds of things. And the relief you could hear in the person's voice or, or in their yeah. text, like, oh, I'm so happy makes to a, that. And I'm so glad he's it, having fun. It makes a it very, makes a very big difference. difference. I've, I've had people Absolutely. actually say, 
you know, you really don't need to text this every day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, really, I'm, I, that's like, you know, we, we just, I don't want to say bombard them. <laughs> you know, if we're doing an overnight pet sit, you know, we're going three times a day minimum. And uh, every time we go, we send a little note or a picture. And some people say, you don't really need to do all that. You know, just, and we leave notes, just like you say, you know, we have a, a form that we leave at so that every time we come in, we make a note and talk about the dog, et cetera. But it's, um, they're very comfortable when they come home. It's like, wow, this is unreal. Yeah. And I think what most people have noticed and, and what I've noticed mm-hmm. about when I'm very careful about who I have watch my dogs is that I know if it's gone well, because when I get home, my dogs are like, oh, okay. yeah, I'm so happy to see you, but I'm totally not stressed. And that makes such a huge difference. And I think once somebody has had yeah. a professional pet sitter, it's very hard to go back to something else because you get used to that quality of service mm-hmm. that only comes with somebody who takes this as a profession and takes the responsibility of your animals yep. very seriously. Um, not to say you can't have fun, but it's uh, – it is a re- it's definitely a, a, a profession. And uh, when you have somebody who treats mm-hmm, it that way, sure. you know that your dog is going to be cared for well. So what do you want, what would you, if you, there were two or three things that you could say to somebody or let a pet owners know about professional pet sitters, what might that be? What do you really want them to know? You feel like they, well, so, they don't ask often enough. So, some of the, some of the basic things that they really need to know are uh, like, does a pet sitter have proper business license for the city they work in or the state if required? Um, is a pet sitter insured and bonded? These are foundation questions that a uh, interested party in hiring a pet sitter should know. Uh, can the pet sitter offer you know, or provide proof of clear criminal background checks? Uh, everybody that works for me has had a, a criminal background check. Uh, does a pet sitter provide references from clients or from clients? Yeah, well, I can't talk today. Uh, <laughs> will a pet sitter use a pet sitting service agreement or a contract so that you know all the rules or guidelines, you know, and then and, and costs? Um, has a pet sitter completed a uh-huh. completed a uh, pet sitter? Uh, cert- certificate of professional pet sitting. Uh, what else? Is a pet sitter a member of a professional educational association such as Pet Sitters International or NAPS? Those, those are the key questions that a client mm-hmm. should ask. And again, they can go to Pet Sitters International and, and get this information too. So there's a, there's a whole layout up there, and it's simple. When the Put your zip code in, and then it brings up information. It gives you the information about things to ask uh, a pet sitter. Mm -hmm. Well, we will definitely put on the website um, links to both search engines on NAPS and on PSI. And to, uh, uh, if they have a web page, you know, the the kind of questions you should be asking so that people can have that readily Mm -hmm. available when they go to call their pet sitter. True. So, um, have you found that it's um, that it's been handy to be a dog trainer in addition to a pet sitter? How has that affected your pet sitting business? Well, well, because I'm a dog trainer and animal behavior consultant, uh, and I study animal behavior all the time. In fact, I'm going to uh, Clicker Expo in D.C., and I happen to be there. I'm also a photographer. I'm their event photographer for the event. So I'm there to learn awesome. more I'll about animal there. behavior. Yeah, are you going to be there? Yep, yeah, I'll be there. Oh, cool. Well, I'll be there. And uh, what's important about that is, again, it's continuing education for me and training and learning about animal behavior. So that's why I say when I go into people's homes, I'm very polite about it. Um, I'll give you a quick example. I, a lady called not too long ago and wanted information about pet sitting, and my wife's the one that handles all the scheduling. So I went and did this meet and greet and she's got a great day but before i got there my wife had mentioned something that triggered some uh, uh, something in my head and she said the, the the dog will be in a crate when you get there she does that with everybody that comes to the house and that put up a red flag mm-hmm. you know so i go to the house i 
you know, she greets me at the door. I walk in and I have this giant Great Dane. That was a, one of the biggest Great Danes I ever saw. And I can't do anything when they're in a crate. I'm watching the dog's behavior. He's, he's growling and barring his teeth. And was, you know, he was not very comfortable. So I said, would you please let your dog out? And she lets her dog out and he comes over and he bites me. He doesn't bite me and draw blood, but he's not social at all. This dog, I, I haven't met a dog in a long time that was not, this, not social. And I, I told her right then and there, I says, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't take care of your pet. I said, I can, I can help you with the behavior problem, but I can't do that before and, and have any of my pet sitters come here because it's unsafe. Mm-hmm. So that's from my education. I mean, you, you, we do interview people and their pets, and if their pets aren't safe, you know, there's, there's no way we're going to take care of them. But we advise what we can do or help them, you know, in the future. Mm-hmm. You know, those are behavior problems or we look at behavior as behavior and uh, a lot of times they can be resolved. So it's really, really important. And that, that's why we you know, continue to learn more and more about animals. Now, do all of your pet sitters that work for you, are they all um, certified as well and members of NAPS or PSI? No, they're, well, we're actually they're all covered under us, but, being a certified person, I, I train everyone under my umbrella. And if they okay. want to take the courses, they can. But they're all trained and they all do the same thing that, you know, I've trained them to do. They're, they're, they're very, and periodically I even check up on them. You know, I, I'll go on pet sits with them and see how things are going. But they're all, you know, our, the owners of the pets love everyone that works for us that takes care of their pets. And then, and the, the other thing we do for our clients is being in business as long as we have, we have a fair amount of turnover of animals just from uh, you know, mm-hmm. pets passing away and people moving and so on and so forth. Uh, when, when a, unfortunately, when a pet passes away, what we do for that pet, we actually send $25 to OSU. We have a special fund over there. And what... OSU does in the vet clinic is they send out a letter stating that we donated $25 in the pet's name to this research fund. Mm-hmm. And they send that to a client. And it's just a small way of thanking them and, and, and you know, unfortunately losing their pet also. But uh, we do things like that because we're serious about what we do. So, you know, it's uh, important that we let people know it's not just about making money, <laughs> you know, right. to give back. Right. right. And the experience uh, of, of serving that pet meant something to you and well, the um, loss of the pet is a tragedy, but something good can come from it with this donation toward the research fund uh, can right. at least help people feel a little bit better about um, the experience of, of having had a pet sitter and knowing that, that they had qualified professional people caring for their pet when they were unable to. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's great. Okay, so thank you, Doug, so much for being with us on on Your Family Dog. We will make sure that those links to search engines so you can find a NAP certified or a PSI accredited pet sitter in your area are on the website. We'll also list some of the questions that you should be thinking about when you are looking for a pet sitter. Are they, you know, are they licensed? Are they insured? Do they offer a clear Proof that they do not have a criminal record. Always a bonus for somebody you're going to take care of your house. Mm. Do they have references? Um, they um, Do they have a service or contract agreement, which I think is incredibly important because that clears out, clearly mm. states what they're responsible for, what you're responsible for. So there's no questions about what's going to right. happen. So um, And are they... Um, are they a member of a professional organization, which I think shows a certain level of seriousness. If you're going to pay the dues and go to the conventions, then you're going to take the business seriously. Mm-hmm. So, Because it's not just so a much. hobby. No, it's not. Yeah, it's just not a hobby. hobby. I, I, was out, I was just out, no, just, I think three years ago, out in San Diego for a PSI conference. And uh, it, was a, it was a very good conference. And again, it, it's, it's just more education. <laughs> and someone, someone in the background saying, hey, it's time. 
Yeah, yes, apparently right. someone is uh, breaking in my house or something because I, I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's that's all, right. all right. Um, You know, if, if we didn't have those kinds of things happen, people wouldn't take us seriously as dog trainers and pet sitters if we didn't that's have right. dogs in our own lives. <laughs> so, well, thanks again, Doug. Hey, thanks. Thanks for listening to Your Family Dog. Got questions? Interesting ideas? Colleen and Julie would love to hear them. Call 614-349-1661 or visit www.yourfamilydogpodcast.com to share your thoughts.